Hi, Steve here from Steve's Internet Guide and in this video we're going to look at IP4 addresses and address classes. Now what is an, uh, an IP address? Well every device attached to a network and the Internet has an IP address and the, the wiki definition of the IP or Internet Protocol address is here and it's basically a numerical label, label attached to a device. Now IP4 uh, uses 32 bits for the address and it's written in four 8-bit blocks in dotted decimal notation and here I've written an IP4 address uh, in binary format, you can see 32 bits here and in dotted decimal notation here 0.0.0.0 that's the dotted decimal representation of this binary IP address here and this one here is known as the most significant byte and that's important when we look at uh, address classes in a, in a second and here's an example uh, IP address 11.5.6.1 and here is the binary equivalent below it now before we look at the addresses uh, let's look at what a network is well a network is a collection of computers that can communicate with each other and importantly uh, a network has a network address now a node is a computer or device on a network and a node has a, a node address. Now the common analogy you'll see used is uh, streets and house numbers and you can equate a street address with the network address and the house number with the node address. An IP4 address represents both the network address and the node address so it's basically split into two components you can see here network and node address. Now the question really is which part of the address is the network address and which part is the node address. Now to distinguish between the two, a uh, bit of a spelling mistake there, between the two we use address classes and so address classes divide the IP address into a network component and a node component. Now we've got five address classes. We've got class A, class B, C, D and E. Now only class A, B and C are used for addressing. The other two, uh, the class D and class E ranges, are reserved. The class D is used for multicast and the class E is used for research. A class A address is divided into network, node, 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 which is that 8 bits for the network and 24 bits for the node. And a class A address was allocated to large organizations you can see down here. There won't be many large organizations and the large organizations would have lots of computer addresses or node addresses, uh, which is what you've got with a class A address. You've got a limited number of networks, 256, but you've got lots of nodes, uh, whatever um, 2 to the 24 represents, it's, it's a lot. Now a class B address is split into 16 bits for the network, there's two eights there, and 16 bits for the node. This was intended for medium sized organizations uh, where you've got a lot of uh, medium sized organizations and they're going to require quite a few node addresses. And finally the class C address uses 24 bits for the network so you can have lots of networks and 8 bits for the node which limits you to 256 minus 2 which is 254 node addresses on each network. This was intended for small organizations and like you'd expect there'd be lots of small organizations and those organizations wouldn't require many uh, node addresses. So that's the class A, class B and class C address and the, the original intention for those addresses. The problem we've got now is given an IP address, and there's an example IP address, how do we know which is the network component and which is a node component? So is this a class A address, is this a class B address, or is it a class C address? Uh, once we know which address class it is, then we know which is the network component, and which is the node component. So is it a class A address, class B, or class C? Now the method we use is to find the location of the first zero bit in the most significant byte. Now remember the most significant byte is the one on the left so here 12 this one here is the most significant byte. So we convert this into binary and we look for the first zero and if the zero appears as the first uh, binary, no binary number there then it's a class A address. So 
zero plus anything is a class A address. Now, if you work that back into binary, we can have an address of all zeros, and we can have an address of zero plus all ones. Now, if you convert the all ones into back into decimal, it gives you 127. So a class A address has an address range of 0 to 127. So if we look at this address here, 12.1, we can see it's between 0 and 127. So this is a class A IP address. Now for class B, now we move the 0 and notice the 0 is moved from this position, the first position. It's gone into the second position there. So we follow the zeros moving towards the right. So the most significant bit now is a 1. The second one is a 0. And after that, we don't care. So all of these there can be zeros or 1s. So if we do that back into binary, we've got 1, 0, 0, 0. And we've got 1, 0, which is that bit, those two bits there. Uh, followed by all ones. That is our range. So that gives us converted this back into binary gives one two eight to one nine one. So this number here is one nine one. If we look at a class B address, if, uh, we're looking for a, an address in the range one two eight to one nine one. Finally, a class C address. Again, we move the zero to the right. So now we've got two ones here, a zero plus, we don't care what these are. Now, again, if we convert that back into binary, we've got the two ones and a zero. We can see it here. And then we've got all zeros. So that gives us one, nine, two. And then we've got two ones and a zero plus all ones, which gives us two, two, three. So a class C address has an IP address in the range of 192 to 223. Remember, that's the most significant byte. Now, this type of addressing, what I've just described, is known as classful uh, IP addressing. It actually resulted in a, in a very wasteful uh, IP address location. And the reason being is if I go back to a, a class A address, um, I don't know what that equates to in decimal, but it's it's a lot. Uh, no network is going to be that large. So even though you allocated uh, an organization a class A IP address, it's still needed um, to do something to actually use that address. And that something was subnetting because the a network with so many nodes on it would be unworkable. So it had to divide the network into smaller networks, which is where subnetting comes in. And it's uh, what we're going to discuss in, in the next video, uh, IP subnetting. Now, let's have a look at um, some IP addresses, what we call private and special IP addresses. Now, certain IP addresses aren't routable. That means if they get out onto the internet, they will just get discarded. and the class A address starting with 10 is one of those addresses. The class B address starting with 172.16 to 172.31 is a class B address range. And again, that is reserved and non-routable. And this one should be very familiar with to you. It's a class C network address, uh, 192.16. Uh, 1680 through to 192 168 and this address is used commonly on internal networks uh, all the computers on my network are using 192.168.0. something uh, and most home networks are configured to work like that we also have what's called a link local address which starts with 169 uh, 254 and these are auto assigned when there's no DHCP server available. I can't remember what version of Windows it came in. Um, it might have been Windows 2000. But basically, if you boot, boot up a, a, a Windows machine, and I say I can't remember the version, on a network with no DHCP server, it will auto, auto allocate itself uh, an address in this range here, 196, 169.254.something. Uh, this has actually become very important and it's uh, used in what's called um, zero configuration networks. 
these linked local addresses actually uh, part of the IP version 6 specification and they've also been made part of the IP4 and uh, say they're used in uh, zero configuration networks. The final one is the loopback address uh, 127.0.0.1. Now the entire range is available we commonly use 127.0.0.1 it was for testing but we could use 127.0.0.6 uh, 1271.006 whatever number we wanted to in that range and it would work the entire uh, 127 range is reserved for the loopback address again very very wasteful okay a uh, quick summary uh, all devices on a computer network have an IP address an IP4 address is simply a 32-bit binary number and written in dotted decimal notation and it's split into two components a network and a node and the address class defines what bits are used for the network and what bits are being used for the node. And just to finish off some resources that you may be interested in uh, that are available on the site. And if you go to this tutorial here on the site, IP version 4 basics, you should find links to each of these tutorials. Uh, that's the end of the video. Uh, if you've got any comments on the video, then you can leave them in the comment form below. If you like the video, then you can use the like button below. If you want to be notified of new videos on the channel, then you can always subscribe to the channel. Until next time, bye.